All right, hello and welcome to any of you and all of you volunteers who may be tuning in to this virtual training. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to watch this training and go over things with us, uh, and we look forward to a great event with you. Um, so again, we want to start off by saying thank you to all of you for first tuning into the training, but moreover volunteering for the 2018 Aerospace Challenge. Uh, we're so excited to have you all on board um, for truly this one-of-a-kind STEM event. Um, so on behalf of the staff, uh, the committee, and the board of directors, um, we just want to say thank you and welcome to the training. Um, so first, before we get into things, we just want to introduce you to some of the key folks that you may be encountering um, and or reporting to throughout your time at the Aerospace Challenge uh, Monday through Wednesday of next week. Um, first will be the event chair of the event, uh, Andy Western. Uh, his assistant chairs include Eric Barkum and Dan Hovica. Uh, our event manager from the staff side will be Angel Guzman, assisted by Danique Chamberlain, uh, the intern for this event. Um, myself, the volunteer coordinator, our board liaison, Ray Artigue, our chairman of the board, Steve Leach, and of course our executive director, uh, Mike Neely. So these are just some important faces uh, that we'd like to introduce you to uh, before the event day. So just when you show up and you're aware of these people when you see them, you know, okay, this is who I should be reporting to, asking questions to. Um, so again, those are your folks. Um, now, before we get into Aerospace Challenge itself, um, during each training, we do like to take the time to overview some key organizational facts about the festival and how big of an impact volunteers like yourself have had on us. Um, so first things first, uh, we were founded in 1971 by nine visionaries and community leader volunteers. Um, and essentially, it was with the goal to put into motion um, an elite college football postseason matchup. Now, what's important about this is the simple fact that the Fiesta Bowl was started by volunteers just like yourselves. Um, so without you guys, without the volunteers, this organization wouldn't exist. Um, so that's just to echo that sort of importance that you guys have on everything that we do. Um, so 46 years later, uh, today, the organization has grown to be much, much more than just a game. Uh, the Fiesta Bowl now hosts nearly 40 events, small to large, uh, on an annual basis, with the driving force being positive evolution of the Arizona community uh, through world-class event production. Um, and that has kind of led to our newest mission and vision, which is the Fiesta Bowl strives to create a positive economic impact for Arizona and focus on the community while having fun. Um, and the vision, of course, be a world-class community organization that executes innovative experiences, drives economic growth, and champions charitable causes, inspiring pride in all Arizonians. Um, so a little bit more about the Fiesta Bowl. This is just a recap of the 2016-2017, so last year's um, events that we had and the, the total amount of participants per event and the number of volunteers that we utilize in each event. Um, so long story short, it, it takes an army of volunteers for each event to assist our small staff of only 30 uh, to put on these one-of-a-kind world-class events. So again, without you, the operation of these events uh, are just simply impossible. Um, so we can't thank you enough for, for showing up and for being such an integral part of what we do on a daily basis. Um, a little bit more about you guys as volunteers. Uh, the Fiesta Bowl has about 3,000 volunteers in our database that we can tap on uh, on an event-to-event -event basis. Um, broken down into the following demographics, we're made up of 35% female, 65% male in the gender category, uh, and we range in age from 8 years old to 87 years old. Um, and years spent volunteering, I mean, a lot of first years, 25%, uh, the most volunteers that we have are, are range in the two to five year span. And then we've got the loyal volunteers anywhere from six to 15 plus years that together make up 41%, almost half of our volunteer organization. So what's amazing about the festival is the consistent amount of, of continual dedication uh, by volunteers year after year after year. Um, without those people who are continually there supporting us, we couldn't do what we do. Um, so, so that's truly amazing. 
And, and last thing to kind of give you a, a true reflection of the impact of your hours, your manpower, your shifts, um, here's a recap of the 2016-2017 uh, Fiesta Bowl volunteer season. Um, so all together last year, we encountered 3,009 volunteer shifts, uh, calculating a total of 20,520 hours worked. Um, so again, 3,000 plus volunteers in our database, and all of that resulted in these amazing facts. More than $2 million granted to charities uh, during the 2016-17 season, 500,000 um, to Fiesta Bowl wishes for teachers, uh, 250 plus charitable organizations were served, um, and so on and so forth. It's truly an unbelievable thing uh, that we're doing on, on a daily basis with the help of you guys, the volunteers. And um, just a, a small tidbit, we're the only organization in college football um, in, in the bowl games that is having this sort of impact on the community. Um, so that's something that we take pride in and we hope that you guys are aware of um, so you can be inspired and, and, and have a purpose when you're volunteering for our many events. So now we will get more into aerospace uh, specific information. Um, just to keep you guys informed, we always like to keep clear that we want to provide the volunteers with as much information about the events as possible to understand the event um, and the cause and effect of it all. Um, so that's essentially what we're going to get into for this portion of the training is a lot of specifics about the event. Uh, we won't go into specific detail. I won't read every word on the page. Um, you know, you can do that in your own time, but we do like to provide you uh, with the tools necessary um, to be as efficient as your job at your job as possible because when you throw on that volunteer t-shirt, you then become a representative of the Fiesta Bowl and the event itself. And to everyone on the outside looking in, you're officially the person that they need to tap on in order to understand what's going on. Um, so it's great for you to have this resource of information. So we hope that you utilize it, um, read it, and become familiar with the event if you haven't already done so. Um, so where will the Aerospace Challenge be taking place? Uh, these preliminaries will be taking place at the ASU Polytechnic campus. Um, and when? Monday, January 22nd to Wednesday, January 24th. And what it is, it's essentially the largest extra extracurricular STEM event um, for grade school uh, in the state of Arizona. Um, so that's a huge accomplishment that we, we have done. Um, students essentially will create a scale model and a written report uh, about international logistics mission to colonize Phobos, which is a real moon of Mars. Um, and so essentially the goal is to establish a sustainable base on Phobos with minimum support from Earth. Um, and the winners of this entire challenge will win an all expense paid trip to space camp um, down in Alabama. Um, and the sponsors of our event, title sponsor is Honeywell, and uh, brand new sponsorship this year, our presenting sponsor is Kadima Ventures. Um, and just to go into a little bit more detail, we do want to play this brief video recap from last year's uh, Fiesta Bowl Aerospace Challenge. <laughs> This right here is our solar panel. Each solar panel generates 350 watts of energy. Our command slash research center for our exercise module. And basically, we'll put everything an astronaut needs to survive. For this competition is for fifth through eighth grade. They've been working on these projects for several months. It's an all expense paid trip to Space Camp. These six teams were the top teams out of a competition that had just under 300 student teams from across the state of Arizona. These kids were amazing and they were amazing on a number of levels. These are the people that are going to follow in our footsteps if we do our job right. I mean, there are kids here we would offer jobs to. <laughs> in first place, Challenge Charter School. <laughs> There's such a need for engineers and people like that who can deal with technology and those kind of things in this world and I think it's really important to get kids excited about that and also have something like this where they have to work as a team because nobody can do this alone. <laughs> All 
All right. Um, so again, that was the video recap from last year's Aerospace Challenge. Um, and the guidelines will be exactly the same for this year. Uh, the challenge will be exactly the same, colonizing Phobos. Um, so that video really gives you the inside look into what exactly you're going to be experiencing um, and seeing firsthand at the Aerospace Challenge. It really is an exciting event. Um, it's unbelievable to see how smart um, these kids, this next generation of kids is, um, and it's super impressive. Uh, kind of makes me feel bad about myself and what I did as a child, because Lord knows I was not competing uh, for a, a, an all-expense-paid trip to space camp. Um, so it truly is impressive, and we hope that you're so excited. It's one of the most unique events that the Fiesta Bowl puts on on a year year basis um, and we're excited to continue that as well as continue that sponsorship and that partnership um, with Honeywell and start a new one with Kadima Ventures. Um, so more into uh, the actual workings of the event um, and how it specifically works. So essentially, the, each team must consist of at least three to five students, um, and the students must be in grades five through eight and can be a mix of grade levels anywhere between uh, those three years. Um, the competition each day will begin at 9 a.m. and will conclude at approximately 4 p.m. with registration every day opening at 8 a.m. Every day will include registration, judging, entertainment, lunch, and awards and finalist selection at the end of the day. Each project is going to include a physical model, a mission patch, uh, presentation and display, display board, um, as well as a written report of how you know, everything will work, each section kind of delved into inside of that written report, um, and then of course expense receipts uh, to prove that they did not exceed the $50 min, uh, maximum. Um, next up. Oops. Um, so some project details, um, ex essentially these children are asked to construct a scale model of an international logistics mission to colonize Phobos, uh, again a moon of Mars like, like we talked about two slides ago. Um, the base will have to support a crew of about 24 people within 10 years, um, supported by, by nine launches per year. Uh, from Earth. Each launch can transport six people or cargo, not both, either or, um, in a module 4.5 meter meters in diameter, fairing with a length of 10 meters, uh, no mixing or matching again, um, and the maximum cargo weight per launch is 30 metric tons. So essentially the whole purpose of this is to develop a plan to establish a sustainable base on Phobos with minimum support from Earth and to develop an infrastructure to support command control and communication for robotics and humans on Mars. Um, how do you win? This is a question that we get a lot. Um, so essentially Honeywell will be uh, providing aerospace engineers um, who will pr uh, volunteer their time to serve on a panel of judges who will be scoring the team based on the categories listed below. Um, so physical presentation, logistics planning, base design, physiological factors, Phobos Base Society, uh, primary mission and secondary mission. And all of these categories have their own weight bearing on um, uh, points per section um, that will essentially add up to a certain score. Um, and that is kind of how each team will be scored. Now these team of judges will spend about five to seven minutes with each team. Um, and each team will have their own specific day in which they're presenting either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday to these judges. Um, so the two teams with the highest scores from each day are going to move on to the final competition, um, totaling in six finalists. Um, the advancing teams are going to be asked to leave their models and documentation, etc., uh, with the competition organizers for safekeeping. Um, and the materials will be returned on the day of the final competition. The biggest point in this is to ensure that uh, they're not making any last minute changes uh, to, their, to their models prior to the final day. Um, the six advancing teams are going to deliver, deliver a 10 minute oral presentation to a panel of judges uh, on a separate date. And these judges will have the opportunity to review the models and the documentation prior to them selecting the winners. Um, and of course, in the event of a tie, judges will then be asked to rank the six finalists and the team with both the greatest total score and highest rank will be the overall winner of the event and head on to space camp. 
Um, what are the prizes? This is also something that you might encounter people asking you throughout the day if they don't already know so. Um, all of the participants in the event are going to receive a t-shirt, a certificate, and a program. Um, and the six finalist teams will receive a team plaque. Um, on each day of the preliminaries, four teams will be selected to receive honorable mentions. So essentially there will be 12 total at the end of the preliminaries. Um, and then also on each day, three teams will be selected to receive the Kids' Choice Awards. And this is based on anything from, you know, team name to actual content. And this is chosen by the kids themselves when they get the time to walk around and view other, other teams' uh, presentations, uh, their, their team names, what they're wearing, all of that. Um, and those are what those Kids' Choice Awards are based off of. Um, the grand prize, of course, as we've talked about, is a VIP trip. Um, to a week-long U.S. Space and Rocket Center space camp um, in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, so it's a five-night adventure, and it'll have both educational pieces and exhilarating pieces. Um, and it's going to incorporate for both real-world applications of science, technology, engineering, and math education, otherwise known as STEM. Um, and then as well, they will be receiving an on-field presentation um, at the festival, uh, our festival, one of college football's most premier bowl games. Um, so really cool features, awesome, awesome grand prizes, and we're really excited to award that to the next uh, smartest group of children. Um, so back to you guys, the volunteer positions uh, for Aerospace Challenge preliminaries. Um, just so before we get into to the meat of this, for all of the positions that I'm going to review, we're just going to ask you that you remain flexible in your duties on the day of the event. Um, there are always last minute changes, volunteers who, who can't show up because they're sick or have a family emergency, um, and we need to last minute change things around. Um, so we just want to thank you in advance for being flexible and understanding of any of those changes um, that may arise in the day of the event. Um, and definitely pay attention to all of the shifts, regardless of if you're just a morning shift or just set up and check in. Try and pay attention to all silos so that way if you're asked to switch, um, you know, you'll be, you'll be ready to do so and confident in doing so. Um, so first, set up and check in. Um, your volunteers, duties and responsibilities, uh, again, this was shown to you when you were signing up for the shift, um, so you should be pretty well versed in this. Um, but essentially, you'll be asked to help with final load-in and setup and resetting, of course, on Tuesday and Wednesday of the areas in preparation for competition days. Um, so this can include anything from posting of signage um, to moving of tables and chairs and other equipment, uh, hanging of balloons, any of that, checking in on, on uh, participant teams and judges. You'll be assisting uh, some of our staff members who will be uh, manning up check-in of the teams and the judges. So any of those other duties as assigned, of course. Um, so be prepared for that. Your shift time, as you know, 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. on either three of the days that you've signed up for. Um, meals and refreshments, this is important. We will have light refreshments and a light breakfast um, that will be provided probably upon check-in, but we do encourage you to bring your own snacks and meals. Um, if you're worried that you're going to be allergic to something, if you're worried that you're not going to like what's there, um, or if you're going to get hungry or thirsty, just please bring your own stuff um, if you're at all worried about that, um, especially so if you have an allergy. Uh, dress code, it'll be your volunteer t-shirt, which you will receive uh, upon check-in the first day of your shift. Um, and that must be visible at all times. You can wear jackets, and et cetera, but we ask that that volunteer t-shirt be either the outermost layer or you unzip your jacket so it can be well seen. Um, comfortable shoes, uh, you know, you're going to be walking around a lot uh, in khakis or black pants, no sweats and no jeans. And that dress code will apply to all three of these uh, volunteer shifts. Uh, on to the next morning shift. Um, Duties and responsibilities for you guys will include anywhere from running scores, monitoring student zones, serving lunch, etc. Um, so essentially, uh, what's going to happen when you show up is we're probably going to assign you to a specific area of, of tables um, in which students' projects will be um, held. And then essentially, your duty will be to monitor that area, making sure everything's okay, everything's clean, 
But um, moreover, when the judges are taking their five to seven minutes to evaluate each student, you'll then be responsible for kind of checking in at the end of those five to seven minutes with those judges, uh, collecting their scorecards and bringing them to our scoring room. Um, so that's something that we will discuss and show you day of, um, but just so you're aware that is kind of what the responsibilities will look like. And then of course, Raising Canes will be sponsoring the lunch for the kids as usual. Um, so we will be asking you to assist us in serving that lunch. And then of course you will receive uh, some of that Raising Canes as your lunch after the kids have been served. Your shift time, 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Again, meals and refreshments, as I mentioned uh, just now, Raising Canes boxed meals, which will include chicken strips, toast, and cane sauce will be provided to you guys at the later half of your shift after the student participants have been fed. Um, so we do encourage you again to bring your own snacks and meals um, if, if you don't like what's on that menu right there and also especially if you have an allergy. Dress code is the same, volunteer t-shirt, comfortable shoes, khakis, or black pants. Uh, afternoon shift, your duties and responsibilities are going to be identical to that of the morning shift, except of course you'll be in the afternoon, the later half of the day. Um, so again, monitoring those designated zones, uh, collecting uh, judges' scores and bringing them to the scoring room and serving lunch, and last but certainly not least, um, assisting us in any necessary teardown or cleanup. That's going to be vital for us. Um, you know, the more hands we have on deck, the earlier we're able to get out um, and, and get home to our families. Um, so we ask you to help us out a lot with that, if at all possible, um, and we thank you in advance for it. Um, shift time is 12 p.m. to 4 p.m., um, meals and refreshments, again, will also be ra Raising Cane's boxed meals. You will receive this at the earlier half of your shift, again, after the students, student participants have been fed. So you will also be helping serving lunch um, closer to the time that you arrive for your shift. And uh, then after that is when you will uh, be able to have a little bit of lunch. Um, and same as usual, we encourage you to bring your own snacks and meals. Um, dress code, again, volunteer t-shirt, comfortable shoes, khakis, or black pants. Parking and check-in. Um, this is going to, to be uh, big for you guys. Um, so essentially the driving directions for this, um, let me grab a pen real quick. Um, so you will be heading east down East Williams Field Road, which is right here. Um, and then you'll be heading towards a roundabout. Um, at that roundabout, you're going to want to uh, head north onto Innova the Innovation Way um, all the way up, and then essentially you'll continue east, which is also a, a right down Innovation Way, um, all the way to this volunteer parking lot right here. The entrance will be to your right, uh, and you'll be parking here. Uh, and then you'll see some signage for participant check-in. You can also follow that signage. It'll start around here. You'll walk along the sidelines of, of this uh, uh, soccer field right here to volunteer check-in located right there. Um, so that'll kind of be the directions. It'll be located right next to the event site. Uh, there should be a tent, tables, chairs, all of that. And you'll see myself uh, as well as our other event staff there. Uh, helping to check you guys in with t-shirts and all of that. Um, only thing that we do ask is that uh, you arrive closer to 15 minutes prior to your actual shift start. So if your shift is starting at 12 p.m., we ask that you arrive 11.45 just to give us some buffer time to make sure that all the volunteers are getting their shirts um, prior uh, or proper uh you know, attire and an orientation to what you guys will be doing, where you'll be assigned. Um, that'll make things nice and easy for us. Um, so yeah. Oops, I should probably delete that. Okay, um, so as always, the number one rule here is to have fun. Um, this event, like I said, is unlike any other that the Fiesta Bowl puts on on a year-to-year -year basis. It's really great to be able to see these young kids participate in this STEM event. Um, it really is an awesome opportunity, and we hope that you take the time to, you know, look around, appreciate the work of these of these young kids and all that they have to offer us uh, in the years to come, and, and enjoy yourself. Uh, and we know a lot of you are returning, so you guys know as well as anyone else that this event is a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's not a lot of work for the volunteers, so we appreciate you coming out um, and, and just having fun with us and enjoying this awesome environment. Um, so, if you have any questions at all, um, 
just feel free to email aerospacechallenge at fiestable.org or volunteers at fiestable.org or reach out to any of our staff members from the Meet Our Team slide earlier uh, in this presentation and we'd be glad to, to take your call, uh, return your emails, any of that. We're here for you. We're a resource, resource for you um, and we look forward to seeing you soon. So thank you so much um, for tuning in. We appreciate it and we hope that you got a lot out of this training um, and we will see you next week. Thank you so, so much.